IG4, I'm um, not going to really talk from the slide, is, is we're into providing local authority forms for the citizen to use, essentially, um, <coughs> where we want to make it easy for them to use, but more in terms of interfacing with the back office. So I'm going to talk through, in my presentation, three scenarios where we've used Azure in different ways to use that in, the, in, in its biggest benefit. We use it really as a big web server. So traditionally, we've deployed on-site, and that's taken some time to provision and get the council to move forward. But using Azure in this way, we've accelerated a lot of our projects. <coughs> we have 50 to 60 customers. I don't know the exact num number right now. And all of them typically would use the same set of applications that we've developed, however they deploy, on their own site, in Azure, or on Windows tablets. And I'm going to take you through the architecture that we've used in, in, in deploying those. <coughs> we've tried to go in with local authorities in terms of what challenges them. What data are they looking for? How do they move forward in using that data? <coughs> and how do they pass it to back office systems? And again, you talk then about the integrity of that data, where that data should live. And I'm going to cover off how we deal with that in Azure as we go on. One of our biggest sellers, <coughs> and the reason people go into online forms is, hopefully no, nobody in this room has ever applied for housing benefit, but rest assured, when you pick that housing benefit form up that is in paper copy, it's quite a weighty piece of paper. It's 40 to 50 pages normally, and the costs alone of printing that type of paper form to give out more than pay for this type of system going in online. <coughs> I mentioned earlier, <coughs> I'm going to talk about three scenarios of using Azure, all different and all different types of hybrid capability, ultimately where we want to go to full cloud use. <coughs> I think the thing about using Azure as a web server, I think the one thing I wanted to get across is you could use it in many different ways and you could present it as though it's your desktop. You're not compromising how your application will look when you deliver through Azure. We use the same .NET, .NET technology, whether it's on your laptop or in Azure, or deployed in some other way uh, on a mobile. And I'm going to take you through those. So this is our current um, <coughs> picture of um, NIE 9, by the way, using uh, SSL um, certificates to secure that data access through your Windows Azure. You're not compromising any of your access accessibility requirements when you're delivering forms to the citizen. So <coughs> your scalability of fonts and your um, ability to change the colors for people with reading type things. And in doing that, you're also not compromising the design of your application or of your forms. <coughs> so you can still take your typical ASPX pages and embed JavaScript to give you that look and feel that people are starting to affect and say, well, I've got this on my personal devices now. Why can't I get that type of interaction on, on the web? Why should I be using old forms type technology and not have that available through everything I do in, in my life effectively? <coughs> We also deliver back office type applications that manage the data coming through in this area. That allows us to step more away from um, conspicuity type stuff and um, accessibility. So we use more Silverlight applications in that area. Again, deployable into Azure. We've taken some of the data out here for uh, protection, obviously. But <coughs> when you design with Silverlight in Azure, it's very much like a desktop. These things, these images that you can't quite see are all buttons, so the user can actually drive the system through buttons rather than having to type or, <coughs> or um, any other type of input device. I, I know some of you can't read the slides at the back, but I know they're going to be available on Cloud Circle as well. So if you want to download them later or email me, I, I can uh, let you have those slides. And again, these are charts that are generated using Silverlight in Azure. So none of the technologies in Azure limit what you can do in terms of user interface and how you want to deploy it and what that user experience that you want in the marketplace. I think the key thing <coughs> we talked about earlier, and everybody's talked about security and <coughs> what levels they're at, is 
how you deploy. Now, in deploying those forms currently into Azure, we use a hybrid cloud. I don't think anybody else used the word hybrid, but <coughs> it is very much using the public cloud for the key elements of delivering scalability and availability, but storing the data in a UK data center. So this model here I've done is a representative of the blue, the blue side is in the cloud. So this is Azure, <coughs> access through the usual secured SSL certificates, <coughs> running using secure web services to put the data elsewhere. So this is scalable. You can have thousands and millions of users if you've got that many HP claimants. And the data is written back into, UK, into U, two UK data centers. One that we use for running all those management reports off that you've seen there sitting inside Silverlight. And the second one is <coughs> our data is obviously pushed back in a secure way to uh, back office systems. So where somebody's going to claim, let's say, housing benefits, that information is transmitted back to the line of business application for, for, for their ongoing processing. The architectures we use behind this, and you know, somebody's talked about App Fabric. App Fabric is very much like a system bus in a computer. So if you take a computer apart, there's something in there that joins everything together. So your App Fabric system bus is essentially joining your web server in the cloud onto your server. So you've got a very private connection there, a very secure connection between your, your own on-site servers and the cloud. That's what gives that level of security. Because we use ASPX and the way we deliver our, our, our web forms, the same application, the same code, run across a huge variety of devices. So the application you saw earlier running as a picture in the cloud there will run on a Windows tablet as well. <coughs> the way we use Azure then is Azure is always on. You know, how many of you as a council can always say your, your machines and your network are always available, not being taken down for backup or anything like that, or patching? Azure is always there. So somebody going out with a Windows tablet can take information in a citizen's <coughs> uh, front room, whatever, whichever way you want to call it, have a SQL database on their device <laughs> encrypted, and as soon as that finds a connection and it's completed that job, it will look to Azure to say, right, route this back now through that same app, app service bus, app fabric service bus, <coughs> into the secure environment of the back office system. So again, another way of using Azure, but just as a hub that's always there and always available to route your data back to your, your own secure back office servers. As well as running IG4, I run a company called Housing IT, very much a sister company, formed as a sister company because we took some investment in to build a new application. <coughs> and the application is, is, around project, is, is around property management, principally aimed at housing associations and what they do <coughs> in running their stock and running their tenants. And one of the principles we had when we started to do that was to say, all the traditional systems in that marketplace wrote elements that they didn't really need to write because they weren't really fully available then. An example of that would be an, a, as a calendar. If you send an inspector out somewhere, you want to write something into his diary. All the traditional systems, they wrote a calendar. <coughs> we haven't done that. We've approached it from, if we want to write something in, into somebody's calendar, we write it into Exchange. Okay, so it's the case of reuse the components, those standard horizontal components that you've got now. So <coughs> in developing the application, we said, well, what's the pyramid of where we're going to store the information in writing this application? So at the bottom level, there's your general relational database that you need to design an application around. <coughs> where would you put your documents? There's you know, dozens of old, older generation, let me put it like that, places you would put documents in. But SharePoint is a good repository for that. And how do you do things like diaries and email. How do you all integrate that into this single pyramid, but available through the web? <coughs> We've designed the screens in, di in, in, in this application, that the screens talk to a web service, which talk to another web service, which is giving it data. So that data might be a document from SharePoint, something from um, SQL, or any mechanism that you want to provide data into those screens. <coughs> 
I know you can't see that now because it's uh, even out of focus for me, but essentially a silver light set of screens that behave like a desktop that's hosted in Azure. These buttons that you can see in the, in the sort of lightest colour are actually touchable buttons or driven by a mouse. And these are functions that you drive to manage your property. <coughs> and within the flexibility of Silverlight, you can get it to act like a desktop application. So this is a typical report within the structure of driving that application. Or you can go back to typical tabular data that's presented through the Silverlight screens. Or indeed, if you're on a particular property, you can bring back all the documents in SharePoint related to that property. So it's using the database saying, this is where I am in, the, in my SQL database, give me all the documents tagged with that same property ID. The architecture we currently use for that, and is currently deployed, <laughs> is SQL, um, SQL Azure holding all the SQL data, sitting inside Azure for the processing, and we have a local server in the customer site running SharePoint 2010. They access the system either on the road, uh, through any sort of device, or across their land within the offices. We're also just about to deploy a tablet so that somebody like a surveyor can go out and say, right, I've got to go and look at this property, go and analyse the property, what's the state of that component, <coughs> go and capture that information in a disconnected way, and then resync that information back to the central service. Ultimately, where we want to go to, because our focus is in the smaller end of the marketplace, is that everybody would take the service from the cloud. So they have no servers on site at all, and all of the Microsoft cloud engine, public supply of Exchange, um, SQL Azure, and all of that is all from that cloud to them, wherever they are in the marketplace.